So now that we've had an introduction to the really cool Fibonacci sequence, let's dive into some of the problems here. And I'm just gonna kind of refer back to our list of Fibonacci numbers up here. Um, you will wanna be able to get these numbers yourself um, on assignments and tests. They're not gonna be given to you. But remember, you just add the two previous ones. So if you just remember one and one, you can add those together to get two, add one and two to get three, two and three to get five. So you can make this list yourself kind of at the top of your page before you start working these problems. All right, so for this first one here, um, we see the formula for the Fibonacci numbers right here. The, um, the formula looks kind of funky here, but you just have to remember what I just set up above. You add two numbers together to give you the next number. So for instance here, I have F3. That means the third number. So one, two, three. The third number is found. And if we just actually do the subtraction down here, three minus two is one, and three minus one is two. So the first Fibonacci number is one. That's what F1 means, the first one. The second Fibonacci number is one. So that's how that formula works. Now those are kind of easy, um, like small numbers. I guess I should say easy, they're small numbers. Let's look at one that has bigger numbers. So down here at our example with a 27th and 28th. So if I add the 27th number and the 28th number, I should come out with the 29th number. And I gave you the 27th and 28th number. I would not ask you to make the list out that long. Oh, that'd be too much. So I would give you these numbers. So I'm just gonna add them together. So adding those two together, I'm gonna type that in my calculator to get that answer. Now I did not give you the 25th and 24th numbers for um, part B down here, but we can work backwards. It is always the two smaller numbers added together to give you the larger number. So if I'm looking at 27, 28, and 26, the largest number is 28. So I add the 26 and the 27th together. I'm gonna do a little bit of algebra here. I'm gonna plug in what I do know I don't know what the 26th number is, but I do know what the 27th number is. Now, if I want to solve for this 26th number, I need to get it by itself. So I'm gonna remove the number that's with it. So I'm gonna do subtraction, and this does make a little bit of sense if we think about it. We're going backwards. We want the smaller number, so instead of adding, the kind of the inverse, the opposite of adding is subtracting. So we would subtract on this one. Now, in our previous video, I went over all this other stuff. So I'm gonna kind of um, just kind of go through, kind of skip over that since we had that whole intro video before. And I'm just gonna go down oops, to where we've got these um, numbers to practice writing as our Fibonacci sequence. Now, I like to start with the largest Fibonacci number possible. You technically don't have to do that, just to, just to kind of like warn you a little bit, um, but I like to. I think it just kind of makes things easier and has less guessing later on. So I'm always gonna start with the largest Fibonacci number for all of these guys. So I've got my list up here at the top. Like I said, you're gonna to wanna to put that at the top of your page. I'm gonna to go to the biggest Fibonacci number I can that's less than 87. I circled the wrong one. That's less than 87. So I can't go over 87. So this is gonna be 55 plus some other numbers. And I've gotta figure out what those other numbers are. So to do that, I'm gonna come over here and subtract And that leaves me with 32. Again, I'm gonna to go to the biggest one I can that's less than 32, so that's gonna give me 21. I have 11 left over. I'm gonna keep this pattern up. I like patterns, that's the reason I like doing this way. The biggest Fibonacci number less than 11 is eight. And then I'm left with three. 
three is a Fibonacci number, so I can just use it. You also could put two plus one there and have the correct answer. Um, so in my math lab, if you're typing in your answer, you could have a couple different answers. That's what I have up here that the answers can vary. So you could have, instead of that three, you could have two plus one. And there are other ways you could break up the numbers. I just like this kind of pattern model that will always work because um, I don't like have to, I don't like to have to guess and check. You can always, well, you can check them, not guaranteed that it will work because you might have your Fibonacci numbers off, but these should add up to 87. If they don't add up to 87, something went wrong. All right, let's look at another one of these. So we'll look at the number 100. And I'll start again up here at the top. I need the Fibonacci number as big as I can get, but I can't go over 100. So I'm gonna start with 89. So that would give me 100 minus 89. So that's gonna leave me with 11. We kinda of already saw 11 up above. That's gonna give me eight. And again, I have that three is, is a Fibonacci number, so I'm just gonna go ahead and write that one down for my final answer, 89 plus eight plus three. Again, you could have that three split up into two plus one. You could have the eight split up into five plus three. So you've got some options there. What I'm choosing is the smallest amount of Fibonacci numbers, um, so it makes it a little bit quicker. That's just the reason I chose that method. All right, so what I want you guys to do is hit pause and try C here, um, try doing 49. So coming back from our pause, the biggest Fibonacci number that I could use to start with would be 34. Then I've got 15 left over, the biggest Fibonacci number is 13. And I'm left with two, that is a Fibonacci number, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that one. So 34 plus 13 plus two. That would be my final answer. Now I'm just gonna warn you, my math lab, when you're gonna type in some of these answers, they think that they're helping you out a little bit. Um, they go ahead and put some of the numbers in there. So the you'll see something, like if I come back up here to this 87, my math lab might have 87 equals and they would already have, I guess it wouldn't be in the box. They would have, they always start with the smallest, three plus eight. And so you would just need to type in the plus 21 plus 55. So they go ahead and put something in there. They think they're being really helpful by giving you the start. They always start with the smallest. Like I said, the answers can vary. The way you work it out can vary. I just like to start with the largest and then work my way down. Um, so just be warned that my math lab will fill some of them in for you.